Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Sunday, hope your weekend has been well. And your next week, you're getting ready for next week and working with clients. I just had a client call me up and ask me about piriformis syndrome. Said that their doctor recommended, or should say not recommended, diagnosed them with piriformis syndrome. And that was the cause of her hip issues as well as her low back pain. Now, one of the things that Jill, my fellow anatomy geek and I, the two anatomy geeks, and I discuss on our series about the hip is the functional anatomy. Because functional anatomy helps us understand what can possibly be contributing to our clients' issues. And more specifically, it will help us direct our clients to more appropriate or specific strategies. So let me share with you just a little bit about the piriformis, and then we'll talk about piriformis syndrome and why I don't think many people actually have a true issue or piriformis syndrome causing their issue. It's much bigger than that. Well, piriformis comes off, here's a pelvis here. So we see the pelvis here. Piriformis comes off the anterior surface of the sacrum. So if I turn this around, so right off the sort of the anterior lateral, so the anterior lateral side of the piriformis, and then it comes around the backside, around the backside of the pelvis to insert or attach onto the greater trochanter. So basically, it's going from that sacrum, the position of the sacrum right about here, and then it comes to the top of the greater trochanter. So what it does is when the foot is off the ground, it can externally rotate the femur, okay? So it's actually an external hip rotator. When the foot is on the ground, and this is what we really truly want to understand about the piriformis, the piriformis can then rotate the pelvis away from that stance side. So as we bring the origin or insertion or the attachments closer together, it can actually rotate the pelvis away from the stance leg. So if you do this with me, put your hands on your pelvis, put your right leg forward, your left leg back. When you rotate your pelvis to your left side, so I'm rotating my pelvis to my left side, well then my piriformis on the right side will help shorten that, or shorten the distance or the contracts to help move the pelvis towards the femur. So it's creating that external rotation or that contralateral motion of the pelvis. Now, how does that relate to hip problems? Well, if the piriformis becomes short and tight, so what's, what's the most common reason, or what's a common reason for why clients will have short, tight piriformis? Well, one of the things that we do, all of us, or most of us generally will do, is when we exercise, we tighten our glutes, right? And again, that may be appropriate for specific exercises, but for a lot of our clients, when we tighten the glutes, or when they tighten their glutes, and their piriformis being part of that posterior hip complex, well, then they don't let it go. They keep it tight. And what happens then is now that hip, the femur, gets compressed inside the acetabulum. So the femur, the femoral head, gets stuck and compressed inside the, the acetabulum. Well, then it also may get stuck and limit and then internal rotation. So again, you can do this real quickly is as you're standing there, let me see if I can slide this down so, so you can actually see what I'm doing. So let me just slide down here a little bit. So put your right leg, just put, put your heel down, I'm dorsal flexing my ankle, and then you can just rotate your hip internally and just see how far it goes. So my right side, it goes fairly freely. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on my left side. Let me see if I can step back just a little bit further. Step back, left foot goes forward, and again, much stiffer and tighter on my left side. So as I'm rotating my femur internally, so internally rotating it, it doesn't go as easily on that left side. Now, we can also check it a different way. So now, put your feet together so your feet are flat on the floor, put your hands on your pelvis. Rotate your pelvis to the right side. So now, what has to happen as I rotate my pelvis to the right side, the piriformis has to lengthen, okay, on the right side. Now, rotate back to the left side, doesn't go as easily for me. The piriformis on this side, or the external hip rotators, partly the glutes as well as the external hip rotators, they're a little shorter and tighter potentially on my left side. Because remember, if I'm, or when I'm rotating my pelvis to the right side, the external hip rotators have to lengthen to allow that to happen. A short, tight piriformis, a short, tight and overactive piriformis can limit that motion. So, what, what and how do you address that? Or I should say, what do you address and how do you address it? Well, number one, you've assessed your client. So again, you may do some other assessments as well. You can also do your, your testing on the table or when your client's lying down, check internal, external hip rotation. 
you can check their squat. Generally speaking, if the client has a short, tight, or limited hip internal rotation, their squat will not look so great on that side. They'll have to compensate around that side because you need some hip, good hip control, alignment and control to squat appropriately. Well, now what do you do once you understand that? Well, now you have to do, number one, start with some release. So you may do some myofascial release. So what you'll do is you'll take, hang on just a second here, you grab your trusty lacrosse ball or whatever you got, and you put the lacrosse ball right back here. So that's one way to do it. You just lie on your back. You can just put the lacrosse ball right behind the greater trochanter, in between the greater trochanter and the muscle belly, or into the muscle belly of the piriformis. So that's one way to release it. But let me show you a real quick, easy way. You've seen me do this before, but now that you understand the piriformis function just a little bit better, let's check this out. So what, what I want you to do is stand with your feet together, and then keep your pelvis straight. So make sure your pelvis stays straight and facing straight forward. Now, without stepping back, keep your weight on your, whatever side is tighter on you, step back. So now the weight is still, my weight is still on my left side. Well, now what we're going to do is a hip hinge. So we'll just do a couple repetitions of a hip hinge, making sure that my pelvis stays level, it stays level to and even to my forward leg. So I'm not rotating away from the tightness on the side. And if you're doing this well, you should feel a lot of release, or I should say not so much release, but you may feel some stretching in the backside of your glute your external hip rotators, and the hamstring. So just do a few more repetitions. Breathe in, breathe out, lengthen through the back side of the hip. So we're just doing a hip hinge. And again, this is just a, this is a great exercise regardless, but it's teaching your client how to lengthen as well as how to control their pelvis over top of their femur. So essentially what you're doing, just so you can see it anatomically, is you're moving the pelvis over top of the femoral head. So you're actually lengthening that posterior hip complex. Now you've done maybe five repetitions, and it's important you do this so you understand this and can share this with your client. Now let's recheck standing hip rotation. So again, we can do the same thing we did before, bring your right leg forward, check internal rotation on the right leg. That feels the same because I didn't do that side. Check the left side. Well, that's a lot easier for me to turn my hip internally on that left side, hands on the pelvis, feet together, rotate to the right side. That still feels good because that was a direction I didn't have a problem with. Check the other side. Now this side feels a lot better. I can actually move much more freely. It feels almost symmetrical to my right side. Very simple, easy way. Do your assessment to determine your client's restricted range of motion. Teach your client how to release, obviously with a lacrosse ball and or foam roller, whatever tools, devices you use. You can do some mobilization, you can do some stretching. If you're a manual therapist, you can do some manual therapy. And then teach your client how to control it, how to move that pelvis. And I've shared with you how to move the pelvis over top the femoral head without even creating rotation. You're, you're creating sagittal plane rotation, but you're moving the pelvis over top the femoral head to lengthen the posterior hip complex. And you can generate very easily and very quickly more internal rotation. When you understand this concept or these concepts about functional anatomy and how it relates to many of our clients' restrictions, now you can start to see like, hmm, maybe it's not piriformis syndrome that's, that's the issue. Maybe it's a strategy of what your client is doing and piriformis is just one of those muscles that's involved in that posterior hip complex. It's not the piriformis alone. It's never one muscle alone. It's never the psoas alone. It's never weak glutes alone. It's never hamstring tightness alone that's causing your client's issues. It's a strategy issue. And what you need to do is understand functional anatomy, understand just a little bit about biomechanics and motor control, and then be able to assess for that. And that's exactly what Jill and I teach you in two Anatomy Geeks. This month is Osteoarthritis Awareness Month, so we're finishing up this month here. I can't believe we're into the, yeah, almost the last week of the last 10 days or nine days of the, of the month. We did a series on hip and knee osteoarthritis where we go over hip rotation. We go over the anatomy of the hip as well as a knee. We go over the concepts of what causes osteoarthritis, and it's not genetics. There's very little evidence to show that genetics Genetics is a cause of osteoarthritis. Remember, osteoarthritis is the degenerative joint disease is another word for it. We call it a degenerative joint process because it's a process of what happens to our clients. So we share that with you so you can then educate your clients because your clients aren't getting great information from a lot of their health care professionals as well about what it is and more importantly, what to do. And then we share with you obviously the functional anatomy, but more importantly, we share with you strategies, the assessments, the release techniques, and the functional integration exercises so that you're able to apply this information. So if you're looking for more information, if you like this information and you're like, oh, that makes sense now, I can now explain that to my client. Check out the link. The link is right next to this video, above or below, wherever you're watching this video. We'd love to see you. It's a great 
community of individuals. I see a couple of our integrated movement specialists who are a part of our community, Stephen and Sue Gleason, both in Chicago. Just came back from Chicago this a couple days ago. I didn't know why I was a couple days ago. It's just came. I was a couple days in Chicago. Just got back this morning, back to Houston, Texas. It was, it was a great trip to see some of our integrated movement specialists. But this community of two anatomy geeks is a wonderful community of like-minded individuals who are just looking to up-level their knowledge of skill sets so they can help more individuals with osteoarthritis and really help to educate clients because that's that's a lot of what we do, right? We educate our clients, we empower them, and we give them strategies to help them safely and effectively accomplish their health and fitness goals. So if you're looking for more, more information, click on the link, learn about, more about it. And there's CCs, there's wells, like I said, there's knowledge, there's there's application, and more importantly, it's, it's a great way to be supported in the health and fitness community and really make a difference in your community. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out. Feel free to comment, comment on this video and or reach out with any questions. We look forward to seeing you next time at Integrative Movement Insider and keep doing what you're doing. Be that leader, be that light. There's a lot of people out there sharing a lot of negative stuff. Be that light for your clients, for your current clients, as well as your potential clients who are looking for someone just like you to help them safely and effectively accomplish their health and fitness goals. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Make it a great day. Happy Sunday. We'll see you next time.